Hey, Pa. Hey, son. Uh, did we fix the stove? Yes, we fixed the stove. You know, it's amazing how I get so dirty and you stay so clean and we fix everything. <laughs> hey, did Rodney get back yet? I wanted to help me get that piano off the truck. No, dear, he's not. Oh, do you know where he is? I have no idea. He's probably somewhere where he's needed. The El Segundo Institute of the Strange. <laughs> Fred, stop it. He's my husband. That's the only reason why he's moving around without pallbearers. <laughs> Will you please consider the idea? Yes. That's it. And the answer is still no. Now, what's your idea, Aunt Francis? I don't want to hear it. Well, don't listen. Go ahead, I, I want to hear it. Rodney happens to be a decent handyman. So I would like to suggest that you give us the basement apartment and make Rodney the manager of the mm -hmm. San Fernandes. Do what? Give you the basement? That place is worth a fortune. Hey, Pop, that sounds like a good idea to me. When I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Fred, please. Rodney needs it. I mean, he needs to regain his self-respect. And if it came from you, I mean, if you asked him or begged him... Begged? Yes. Pleaded with him. It would make him feel... Pleaded? Yes. It would make him feel that you needed his help, and it would help him to feel like a man again. Please, Fred. Do for me. Listen, just stop crying. We even crying out loud. Hey, come on, Pop. Why don't you be a little understanding, man? I am being understanding. I, I, I always be that way just before I get ready to plead and need. Oh, and thank be. you, Fred. No, I don't want that stone in my face. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go upstairs and wash up for the work that we did on Miss Hopkins' stove. <laughs> Hi. Okay, Rodney. Yes? Uh, I'd like to beg something of you. What is it? Well, from a pleading point of view, I mean, needing-wise. Mm, how would you like to be the manager of Sanford Arm and live there for nothing free? Too far. Huh? Oh, you've gone too far this time, Fred. Sure, you want your sister to live in that dungeon and do all your dirty work, probably for free, right? Well, foul, foul, foul! <laughs> foul, foul, foul! I'll show you foul. How'd you like me to shove a chicken up your nose? Rodney, I don't think Fred is trying to take advantage of us. And we could use the apartment, and it's free. Free? Yeah. Free? When did I ever want anything free before? How much you pay to live here now? Nothing. I wouldn't insult you by offering you money for a place where your sister lives that belongs to her brother. I have class. Well, meet me outside after class. <laughs> so, you know, Rodney, the, the apartment at the Sanford Arms is not exactly free, man. You'd be paying for it by managing the place. Thank you, but you see, I'm not a building manager, Lamont. I'm an impresario. An uh, impa who real? <laughs> I'm an impresario. I'll have you know that I just booked myself and my show in that little movie house around the corner. The one that's showing the Tyro power, oh, I think it's about the geek. Well, they've gone back to a policy of presenting vaudeville. And I just booked myself and my show for $100 a week. Hey, Ronnie, that's great, man. Well, you know, it's just a one-week trial, but the manager said if he likes me, he'll hire me as the steady MC, and then I won't need your apartment next door for free and your room here for free. So, in other words, if the show is a hit, you move out. That's right. Well, who you got? Well, I come out and open the show with some real socko jokes. <laughs> and then I know this little old lady, and she comes out and does great dramatic readings from Shakespeare. And listen to the finale. For the finale, I have this great opera singer, and he sings an excerpt from The Chocolate Soldier. I can see the two of you now. The chocolate soldier and the vanilla Twinkie.